it seems to me like ever since I began the teachings, the front of the church now become more empty because people worry about asking questions or something like that. It used to be up all up front here. Well, you thought that today I am not going to do any teachings. Yes, I do. Today and next week, because it's two special feasts. Today is the Feast of the Holy Trinity. And next week is the Feast of the Corpus Christi. It's been the body and blood of Christ. So I'm going to combine my homily and the teachings together. Okay? I'm going to begin with asking the question. How, if you think you understand the concept of how the Trinity works, the Trinity means the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit works, please raise your hand. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad, all right? I'm glad that you know. Because this morning and yesterday when I asked the question, a few people raised their hand. I said, congratulations for being part of the Trinity. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I remember when I was in the seminary, oh, my dad used to call my son from the cemetery. It <laughs> sounds the same to him. Seminary, cemetery, it all sounds the same. <laughs> he always introduced me, this is my son, he just came back from the cemetery. <laughs> That's what he said all the time. We said, no, don't bring him in here. We don't want to see him. But anyway, when I was in the seminary, we took a class on the Trinity. That the whole semester, that's what we learned about, the Trinity. At the end of the semester, the teacher, whose, mom, whose name was Monsignor Langsfeld, he asked us, if any of you understood what we learned the whole semester, please raise your hand. And I remember, I think two out of 23 of us raised their hand. And he said, you failed. <laughs> and to the rest of us, 21 of us who did not raise a hand, and I was one of them, he said, congratulations, you got an ace. <laughs> you know, in the last 2,000 years, how many thousands of books, I mean, pages after pages, small books, big books, great books, thick books, a skinny book, whatever that is, Thousands of people have been written and explaining to us how the Trinity works. It doesn't matter it's a pamphlet, it doesn't matter it's 3,000 pages book. At the end, if you open that book, at the end, they all will tell you that no one can understand. And I didn't know why they wrote the book for anyway. <laughs> Probably to make the money, I don't know. But they say it's the matter of faith. You know, they are not the first one. The first theologian who ever tried to explain the Trinity, the feast we celebrate today, would be the greatest writer ever live or walk this earth, the great St. Paul. In his letters, if you do a, a Google, not a Google show, doesn't mean that I have a program with all the things so I can type it in and see how many times that he used it. St. Paul, 30 times, three zero times in his letters that he talks about the Trinity. Yet, however, none of the places that he talks about it, that he tried to explain what it is, he just said, this is what you guys need to believe. And that's the end of it. Now, I wonder why Paul didn't explain it. Why? Well, because he could. No one ever could. But why did he repeat it over and over and over and over 30 times? Well, because I think the people back then may have some problem understanding it. So he had to repeat over and over and over to get it into people's life and understanding and faith and belief. Now today, I'm going to try to do no one ever done before, okay? If I could do that, that you have to claim me as part of the Trinity, okay? No, don't do that, okay? <laughs> I'm going to try to help you in some way to understand the Trinity. If I'm asking you, well, Jim and, uh, Jim and John are standing back there. If I ask you and other people to walk out of that door or this door, and I ask you to look up to the east, well, what time is it now? It's 11 o'clock. So look up to the, the little to the east. What do you say? A sun. Yes, thank you. Well, I hope you can see. You can see that out there. The sun is out there. 
So you know the fact that there's a sum, you can see that, right? And do you see the rays that come down from the sun that give you the light? Do you see that? Well, that's why you and I can see now. We can see through the windows. The rays that come down from the sun, the shine that produce the light. Now, together with the sun and the rays coming down, what do they produce? If I turn off the air now, what how do you feel? You feel heated, right? So the sun and the rays together produce the heat. Now I'm not saying that how the Trinity works, but it's helping you and I to understand the concept of three in one. The interchange, not, I'm sorry, that's the wrong word I'm about to use, interchangeable, that's the wrong word. But it's the comprehensive of the inseparable of the three, ego in one. The sun is like the father. The rays that are coming down from the sun is like Jesus Christ that came down. And together with the father and the sun, the sun and the rays is produced the Holy Spirit. The effect of that. Now, you, 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 I'm hoping that it, it helped you a little. I'm not greater than St. Paul or anybody here. Or if you Irish, any of you here Irish, raise your hand. You know how St. Patrick do that, right? <laughs> he used the same prop, okay? But anyway, that's St. Patrick, and I don't want to copy him, okay? Because you know how he died, right? Yeah, that's what I don't want, uh, you know? <laughs> I don't want to die. I don't want to copy St. Patrick because I don't want to die the same way he did. I want to be the unit Martino. That's what it is. That's what the Holy, the, the, the Holy Trinity is about. But understanding the Trinity is one thing. Practicing and believing and living out is another thing. I want to bring you back into today's gospel. As I already mentioned to you on Good Friday, on Holy Thursday, when I said the last word of Jesus before he died, I talk about the importance of those words. Today, I want to bring you to another important words that Jesus <coughs> spoke of. Do you know before somebody die or somebody leave the house or somebody leave a job, you know, or retire from a sport, they give a speech, right? And people pay significant attention to those words, correct? And today we heard Jesus' last word before he's taken up to heaven from the gospel according to Matthew. And listen to what Jesus <laughs> had to tell you and me and the rest of the people. He said, Jesus approached them and said, Our power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. What is Jesus trying to claim here? I am now the victorious lamb. I have conquered everything, not just only in heaven, but also on, on earth. Now, as soon as Jesus said that, I can see the disciple was like, ha, 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 yeah, we feel it good. We hang around with the right man. Remember a few days before that, they were scared behind the closed door? <laughs> now they're like dancing on the airs, and they're on top of the mountain. The mountain is very important. It's a historical thing. Not to traditionally remember how God gave the, the commandments to the people, His law to the people. The first law was given on Mount Sinai. Sinai. Who went up? Moses. Moses went up. That's the old law. Then Jesus came and gave people the new law. The law, how should they live? And after the transfiguration on Mount Tabor, Jesus gave them the no, not until transfiguration. The, there's something called the A. No, no. A, the B, attitude. Remember, again, Jesus took them up to the mountain and told them, this is what you should live. Right? And this is one more time. The gospel opened. Then the eleven disciples went again to the mountain. Jesus, one more time, took them up to the mountain. And these are the law he gave them. He said, all power in heaven and earth been given to me. 
Man, if I was one of them, I would be dancing on the top of those mountains. And Jesus said, wash your feet because you've fallen down, right? <laughs> but anyway, as they were dancing, Jesus dropped them off. He said, well, don't be rejoicing because I got a job for you. You go, preach the good news, baptize the people in the name of the Father and of the and of the now that is also important into us Catholic belief. We don't baptize them in the Creator, in the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier. We have to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if any people come from another denomination and was baptized into that those names, we don't rebaptize them. And I already talked about that in the, one of my harmonies. I give you an example. The baptism brings us into what? Become the sonship of Christ, right? To carry what I call the kingdom of God passport. Okay? Like Father Ethan or and I, we became a U.S. past citizen. You know, it doesn't matter how many crimes I commit, okay? How many years I haven't been paid in tax. Oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, just give that as an example, okay? This doesn't matter how many crimes I have committed and anything. They can kick me out. I don't have to take the oak again to become a U.S. citizen. It's once and for all. Whether I like, they like it or they don't. Now, but if I am not a U.S. citizen, you know that. There are certain crimes. If I'm a permanent resident, they can kick me back to the country where I came from. Now, you guys don't know that, but I do. Because I, I have to be careful on those things, you know. Walking on a thin line here, you know. But anyway, so that's what we Catholics do. We don't rebaptize people. We don't rebaptize people. But if you came from a Mormon church, we do. Because they baptize in the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier. Why is that important? You ask the question, right? I tell you why. <laughs> and and teaching them to observe what I have commanded you. That's what Jesus said. And this is what exactly what he commanded. He didn't say, I give you the power to change my word. He said, do what I commanded you to do. And that's what he did. But you know that's not easy. We, we struggle with that all the time. Well, I hope that you remember my last two harmonies. But you better do, because I know it's fun. Many of the men remember the first homily for sure. I asked you to become what along Highway 75? The billboard. The billboard, yay! Yeah. I asked you to become the billboard, not the billboard near Warner Roberts, okay? <laughs> but the good billboard, okay? The good billboard, the billboard for Christ. And the following words, I asked you to become the living masses of... L O V E. The living masses of love. Today, I'm not asking you anything. But I'm going to tell you who asked you. Jesus asked you. Jesus commanded the disciple and you and I to go and preach the good news and baptize them. When was the last time we actually proclaimed God to all the people around us? You know, we Catholics are good at saying, that's my private matter. I keep it here. I don't talk to anybody. Shh, don't let them know that. Well, you got to get used to me as your pastor, because I don't keep it quiet. What you see the side of the church coming up, you see John and Jim and his ministry is already about to put Mary out there. And all those devotions are going to be happening, we're going to be visible side. And when i talking about putting the size up, one of the parishioners said, to, I said, why for these many years we don't have a size here? You know? And you know what they told me? Shh, Father. We in the South. <laughs> Shh, Father. You know the KKK. They don't like the black just like they don't like the Catholics. I said, oh, don't worry about that. You got a pastor who's not white anyway. <laughs> and if they come, they ain't going to destroy your side. They're going to destroy me. And oh, they're going to test my guns. 
Oh, don't worry about it, Hansi. Oh, don't, shh. Don't worry, shh. Oh, no, my dear friends. Our faith needs to be proclaimed on the top of the mountain. That's what Jesus brought the disciples. You know we struggle with that. That's why Jesus said, oh, don't worry about that. I know you struggle. And he said, but behold, I am with you always. Always. I'm going to be with you always. He's not going to say, well, I, I'm with you when I like to. I feel good today. I'm going to be with you. I don't feel good. You go ahead and do it yourself. It's your problem. He said, I be with you always. Todos dias. No, dias, right? No, dias. I'm trying to. Todos dias, right? Yeah, yeah. His, his Spanish is really good. <laughs> As you can see. Todos dias. All the day. Always. Every day of your life. Until the end of the age. So you can never tell me or tell Jesus at the end of your life. Well, God, I'm afraid that you wouldn't be there with me. He said, you go do it, and I'll be with you to the end of the time, every day. Now, if you don't do that, no wonder why he's not be with you. Because you refuse to do what he commanded you 